Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and we're up to week two of season two of Portrait Artist of the Week. This week's sitter is Nihal Arintha Nayaka and I'm going to do a real-time acrylic painting demo of his portrait for you. Here's my initial drawing. I start out by using a 7B pencil to put in some fairly loose line work and I just work freehand, I don't use a grid. And then what I find is I go back over the, the initial drawing with the second drawing. So that has been done in this case with a magenta watercolour marker pen. And you can see if you look closely, like look, look where I put the, the right hand headphone here initially. And I've moved that over to the left quite a lot. Uh, and there are several other corrections, you know, so when you're doing things just by eye, um, it's, it's difficult, especially with portraits, to, to get the proportions bang on first time to the extent that you'll get a really good likeness. So you can see I've, I've changed quite, really quite a lot in this one, but I feel now I've got a pretty strong likeness, so I'm ready to paint. All right, so with our drawing done, what I'm going to do is mix up kind of the mid-tone for the skin on the face. So I'm taking some alizarin crimson, a little touch of the cadmium yellow, a little touch of the ultramarine blue, and maybe a touch more yellow. And that's a good, a good starting point. It doesn't have to be exactly right to begin with, but we just need to get some kind of tone down onto the paper. So because these are the interactives I'm just going to give that a quick blitz with uh, the water spray and then we're pretty much ready to get started. So here we go. That's a little dark really, a little too dark. So let's add a little bit of titanium white to that same colour. That, that's a little bit close, close enough to get going anyway. And so while I've got this slightly too dark colour on my brush, what I'll do is I'll use that to kind of block in other dark areas. So the eyebrows aren't actually this colour, but they are very dark, so I may as well Just get the tone established reasonably early on. And then if I look across other parts of the face, I can see that there is a little bit of a dark shadow here. It's a little more bluey than the colour I've got on my brush, but there's a dark shadow down there as well. Reasonably dark one around the right hand nostril. And then the moustache is quite dark here, here. Again, I, yeah, this colour isn't right, but I, I can correct that later. And then underneath the lower lip, there's some quite dark hair there as well. I'm just going to lift off some of that because uh, that started to obliterate my, my drawing. So what I'm actually going to do is add uh, a good... Well, you know, this colour, as I said, it's pretty, t it's pretty dark, so... I've added a lot more ultramarine blue to the mix and I may as well use this dark colour now for the hair and, and kind of block in a good portion of that as well. Um, so yeah, so really I'm not overly concerned about the direction of the brush strokes I'm using in the hair, but the hair is has been quite carefully styled. So you know, in contrast to last week with Annie's hair, which was, you know, very, very curly. I will, t I will take, you know, I'm not overly concerned, as I just said, but I will take just a little bit more care because if some of these brush strokes kind of show through when the paint dries, then that's going to help to suggest the hair has been combed and styled in a certain direction. Okay. And then as this colour is a little bit closer to the one I actually want for the moustache and beard, I'm going to go over 
seem to seem to have picked up a habit of uh, painting over the edges of the lips, which isn't what I want to do at all. But anyway, um, let's uh, go back over some of those darker areas with this slightly closer to the correct colour. And then there are other parts of the beard which aren't as dark, but they're kind of a kind of a salt and pepper mix. So to get that started off, I've put in the darker colour and then I can put some lighter highlights on over the top a little bit later. Now, the underneath the chin there is actually it's, you know, it's fairly blue, the, the reflected light. So I just put a, I've added some more blue to the mixture there. And we'll carry that on throughout, um, just to give a bit of variation in colour, really, as we move around the beard. So any texture or you know dry brush effects that I get for the beard, that's all going to help. So that, that's not a, a big concern. Um, but while I've got this colour, which is closer to the correct one again for the eyebrows, I may as well just go over the work I did a moment ago. And this same colour, if I add a little bit more blue again so i'm getting closer to a, a pure blue but i'm just mixing it into the color that i've already got i'm going to add a touch of the burnt umber and again i'm just going to spray the paint with my water bottle and you know while that's on the palette and uh Again, it's a dark tone. I'll use that to block in these rather wondrous uh, headphones that he's wearing. So for the most part, I'm really just treating these as a silhouette at the moment. There are uh, highlights on them and so we'll perhaps add some of those in just a moment well because that's going to be probably easiest and most efficiently done when the paint is still wet um, um, so just got to fill in this little section here I'll come back and do that fine line a little bit later So when I'm, you know, when I'm uh, blocking in these areas, because I've taken quite a bit of care with the drawing, for the most part, I am just trusting the drawing. But that said, you know, later on, or even at this fairly early stage, if I see that something's wrong, you know, I won't, I won't hesitate to make further corrections to the drawing. So, so you know, everything is a work in progress at every stage of the painting, you know, until you actually decide. You know, that's enough. OK, now, while I've got this dark colour going, there's a very, very dark shadow in there. Uh, again, I've kind of gone over the neckline there a little bit, but that's OK. There's a very dark shadow in here as well just inside the collar. So we may as well put that in and then just adjusting the zoom on the photo. Again, not quite the right colour, but in terms of tone, it's not too far off. So I may as well block in that single button that I've included. Now, while the paint's still relatively wet, I'm just going to grab a healthy amount of titanium white and mix that into the existing dark colour that I've got and I'm going to use that right now to just introduce so I'm not concerning myself with the intricacies of the construction of these headphones at the moment I'm just looking at the situation as patterns of light and dark and because they're made of what I assume 
is plastic and it's a dark plastic or you know if it isn't black it's pretty close in color to black these highlights are fairly subdued so you know you don't want to go too bright with these um, and it, you know also from just a design point of view even if there was a really bright highlight on the headphone i think i would probably hesitate to include it because i don't want the headphones to detract from the actual face of the person here and now that i think about it i can actually use this color just applied very gently to begin to pick out highlights in the hair as well or some you know subdued middle highlights if you like these aren't as light as the the brightest areas put a little bit more of that in the beard and it kind of helps keep everything harmonious in terms of color working our way around the entire painting in this way So what I need to do now is just uh, clean my palette up a little bit and come back and mix the, the skin tone a little better than I did before. Actually, I changed my mind um, as I stepped away from the painting. I see, I see that I need to just adjust the, the line of the side of the hair there a little bit just to fill in that gap. Uh, and that's not too bad now. So now I will, I will just clean my brush. I think I'll leave the paint on the palette for later, but I will come back in a second and mix up that flesh tone. So just working through this and thinking out loud again, um, I actually think I'm going to paint the shirt first. So I am grabbing some of the alizarin crimson and then a touch of the ultramarine blue. Touch of the cadmium yellow then a reasonable amount of the titanium white. I'm just, as you can see, I'm just mixing that reasonably thoroughly. Just a touch of burnt umber, just gradually tuning in the color. And, you know, I'm not overly concerned with getting the color of the shirt perfect, but, um, you know, we want it to be in the right ballpark. So quick spritz with the water spray again. And in fact, I'm going to, spray the surface of the painting just with the shirt just gently just to get the paint moving a little bit if those watercolor marker lines run uh, uh, that's absolutely fine i don't mind so keeping the contours of the of the shirt in mind you see the paint flows so much more easily over that wet surface because um, you know the shirt isn't the main uh, subject here obviously so i just need to introduce its presence in a fairly efficient way and you know don't want to spend too, you know, more time than I need really I may not you know, I may go into very little detail we'll see we'll see what happens as the painting progresses but at the moment my plan is just to get this blocked in and you can see that by keeping the surface wet and having the paint reasonably fluid, then if I'm mindful of my direction of brush stroke, then I can automatically and very simply generate the appearance of the folds of the cloth or the fabric, any creases that are there. They're generally going to be going in that direction if I look at my, my sitter here. And then when I come out here, Things get a little bit lighter so I've added a little bit of titanium white I've added rather too much really to be honest so I'm gonna add a little touch of the cad yellow as well a little touch of the alizarin and that's not really quite right but it'll, it'll do blend that in a little bit and then adding some more of the alizarin to that patch of color I've got going on the palette some more of the uh, ultramarine blue see how dark that is reasonably so a little bit more 
a little bit more blue that's probably way too much so we'll bring it back with a bit of the red or the crimson and I'm going to add a touch of the burnt umber and once again I'm going to spray the surface of the painting but just the just the shirt part and just use the wet and wet approach to it's not quite wet enough just to put in again some indication of creases and things in the in the shirt Area needs to be a little darker so I'm going to lose that button for the moment because I can put that back easily okay there we go so the shirt's more or less in place Okay, so let's pick up some cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to add some of that shirt colour that I used before. And gradually pick up more and more of that. And let's see if that gets us close to the appropriate tone so that's way too green at the moment way too way too greeny so I've added some more of the alizarin crimson and that's not too bad not too bad for a starting point anyway so let's uh, not worry too much about that dark area of shadow that I put in before and then I'm going to look fairly closely as I paint this bit in to get the hairline the right shape because the the the, temp, the possible problem is that if you if you trust your drawing too much and you just start coloring in you get little errors here and there and uh, they gradually build up or you know accumulate and um, all of a sudden you've lost the likeness that you had in your drawing So I'm just looking, as I said, reasonably carefully as I <clears throat> move around the, the face. And I'm definitely spotting things. As I do this, you know, where I'm thinking, OK, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. But for the moment, for the most part, I'm just kind of, you know, noting those, you know, logging them in the memory, hopefully, so that I can fix them in just a, a little bit. starting to run out of the colour on the palette so just grabbed a load more yellow and um, a load more of the, the colour I mixed up for the shirt and then let's see see where we are so that's not too bad
And again, at this stage, I'm not being overly concerned with the direction of my brush marks, but I am in general following the contours of the face. So just because, you know, yeah, why not? You, you've got to put the paint down. So, so why not? Oh dear. Uh, let's put that over there for the moment. Um, you know, why not sort of make your life slightly easier if possible? Uh, so the colour I've got here is kind of a mid-tone. So I'm adding that to the part of the neck before what I'm, what I'm doing now is just adding a good amount of uh, white to the, to the same colour I've been using because things get quite a bit lighter here on this right hand cheek. And again, this isn't exactly the right colour, but for the moment, um, it's, it'll do. So it's really just about establishing light, dark and mid-tone fairly quickly, or at least that's the way I'm working today. Getting rid of the, the white of the paper. And then in a little while, we'll be able to step back and see, OK, well, what have we got? You know, is it is it about right? And what needs correcting? Now the eyes I'm not too worried about for the moment because um, I'll come in and fix those in a, in a bit. Um, while I've got this light colour on my brush again without too much concern for getting the colour exactly right, there are some highlights on the forehead which I hadn't included. So we're starting to build up you know, the, pre the presence of a human being here. It's starting to come to life a little bit. I've got this rather unsightly white gap here, which I need to fix in, in a little bit. Um, but let's sort out the mouth next. Now, when it comes to the mouth, you know, in, in this particular pose, we've got sort of several parts to consider. So first of all, there's a little bit of skin that's showing underneath the edge of the, the bottom edge of the moustache and uh, you know, just above the edge of the upper lip and then there's a t there's kind of a tiny bit of skin showing here to the left of the mouth as well so while I've got that colour on my brush why not use it? Grabbed up a healthy amount of the alizarin crimson and just working that into the colour I was using previously that's probably come out a little too pink, so I'm putting some of the ultramarine blue in, and that's not too bad. So then, so then having done the skin around the, the lips, we can do the lips themselves. Whoops, I've got a burst of pure yellow there. That's, that's not quite what we want. OK, so again, it's mostly about getting the approximate mid-tone correct, or at least in the right ballpark. So if I look at the, lip, the lips here, there's, you know, there's quite a range of colour and tone, actually, um, on both the upper and lower lips. But we have to start somewhere. So we simply get rid of the white of the paper. You know, pay reasonable attention to the shape of the lips, but it's all subject to correction a little bit later. So that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to just, no, I'm not, I was tempted to kill some of this white around the, uh, the lips there, but I'm not going to. Uh, so now I just need to paint in the bit of the tongue that's showing. So just added, adding a little bit more alizarin crimson and a little bit of uh, titanium white. And, you know, again, I'm not too worried. I'm going to paint the, the teeth in later. But just to make that colour, might not show up that well on camera, but um, the, the colour I've used for the tongue, 
that's showing is distinct from the colour used for the lips. So that's enough of a guide from my point of view when I come back to it later. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to head over to the eyes and just block those in. Almost regardless of the colour of the whites of the eyes, I tend to start off with uh, some titanium white and a little touch of ultramarine blue. I've probably added a bit too much there and I'm kind of mixing that in with the, the purple I used before. Um, well, let's see how that goes. It might be a bit too dark, but we'll see how that goes. So what I'm going to do is just fill in the, the whites of the eye. I've switched to a slightly smaller um, flat brush. And, you know, I'm aware that this is far too dark. But we'll add some highlights in later. Could almost do with a smaller brush, really, but for the moment, that's, that's going to be OK. And now I've got to be a bit careful here because the paint's wet on that corner of the eye. So what I'm going to do is go over here first. touch in that corner. So I filled in the whites of the eye. Next I'm going to do the pupils, not the pupils, the irises. Now for brown eyes, um, I, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to take a bit of the burnt umber and because I've got this kind of mid orangey brown mixed up already, I'm mixing in that uh, burnt umber into, into the orangey brown. And that's going to give me a reasonable, reasonably dark mid brown, which is going to be suitable for the irises. So I've changed brush again. I have uh, switched to a small round flat, which is my uh, favourite brush for detailed work. So this is one of the problems with working so quickly. You know, some of the paint's wet here, so got to be a little bit careful not to uh, undo some of the work I've done. And we can come in here with the left eye, same kind of idea. So I'm not concerning myself with reflections or light and dark, just trying to get the shape and the position of the irises right. Um, and that's not too bad. And while I've got that colour on my brush and I'm using the small brush, why not, you know, use that where I can? Even if the colour isn't quite right, I can just start to add the indication of the nostrils. Put in a few little uh, guiding marks for later. It's kind of a shadow here. Bit of a shadow down that side of the lip and on that side. So, you know, clearly there's a lot of work to do, but what I'll do next is I'm going to let all of this dry, and while that's drying, I'll block in the background with a pale green. So I've taken, uh, you know, most of the titanium white I've got left on my palette and mixed it into that little bit of blue I had for the for the whites of the eyes and picked up a little bit of this perfectly dark colour as well. Now I'm grabbing a bit of the yellow and that's kind of a pale yellowy green-ish I've got going there. So I want the paint to flow really quite fluidly so uh, just spraying the paint in the palette and what I'll do now is uh, just start to block in the background. So you can see it's come out as kind of a neutral grey actually, which wasn't, which wasn't quite my intention, but there is a little bit of, um, there's a little, little bit of green in there. So I'm painting this kind of hint of green grey in because A, I think there's a little bit of a hint of green in the background, although I could be wrong, it could just be my screenshot. But I think it will help complement the red in the shirt. 
and the red of the lips. So, you know, hopefully it should work reasonably well. Okay, so, so I'm using a brush which is about an inch wide here. And as mentioned, the paint is fairly, you know, fairly fluid because I'm not overly concerned with the background. I don't mind if uh, some of my pencil marks show through from earlier. I just want to have some kind of environment for this guy to occupy. And what I'm doing is, I, you know, the, the colour I'm using for the background here is fairly light in tone because in general the light is coming from the right hand side. And what I'll do, what I'll do in just a second is mix up a slightly darker version of this colour. And that will go in on the right hand side. So, uh, although having said that, is that what I want to do? Yeah, I think, I think it is. I think it is for this particular painting. All right, I've reloaded the palette with some more titanium white. I'm going to pick up some of that dark purple colour like I did before, but this time rather more of it. And in fact, uh, the way things are working out is I'm, it looks like I'm using up all of that. Let's grab a touch of the yellow and we'll see what that looks like on the, on the page. Oh, that's not too bad, I don't think. I'm not sure I like the colour, but, uh, but for now, that'll do. And I'm going to use that to block in the right hand side of the background, just spraying the paint on the palette with water. You know, I don't want the paint to be running everywhere, but I just want to be able to put it on quick. And what, what I'll find is uh, once I've got this first layer of paint down and sealed the surface of the paper, you know, even though this paper is very, very smooth, it's, it's great stuff, this uh, mixed media paper. Um, the paint I apply, once this first layer of paint is dried, it will go on, you know, beautifully. It's just, uh, it's just a completely different experience, really, um, painting onto that sealed surface. You know, just like when you, if you decorate a, f a freshly plastered wall or if you're painting plywood or something, the first coat is always, you know, more difficult in my experience than the second coat. Um, and uh, so it is with paintings. Okay, so that bit of white is still annoying me, but I'm going to correct that later. So the flat brush is handy because you can still have a reasonably you know, decent sized brush, which is going to carry a goodly amount of paint, but um, you can still get into the, the nooks and crannies reasonably well with the corner of the brush. So I'm just adding some more titanium white now. So I just put a little more titanium white in there. And again, I'm going to spray the paint in the palette and pick up some of the spare water that we had collected in the corner of the palette as well, just because I want things to fairly fluidly blend into uh, from the right hand side to the left.
All right, so there's our painting. Yeah, first layer is pretty much done. I'm going to let that dry completely now and then come back with fresh eyes. And what I'll do is I'll work from you know more or less top to bottom, correcting and refining as I go. I've let the painting completely dry and I've mixed up a roughly equal mixture of the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. And the next thing I'm going to do, as you can see, is just work on refining the shape of this right hand eyebrow. So I've gone back to my round, flat, fairly small brush. Now I need to put a lighter colour on the end of that eyebrow, but uh, for the moment I'm going to head over to the left hand brow. And the shape of the eyebrows and how they relate to the eyes themselves. I, I think it's always surprising how much they contribute to to the likeness. And you know, like I did earlier for the early parts of the painting, there are other very dark areas in the hair, for example, which I can use this colour for. And in particular here on the left, the gap between the end of this eyebrow, the edge of this eyebrow and the hair is far too big. So I'm going to correct that now. Again, I'm paying particular attention to the shape of the forehead and the line of the hairline. So I'm trying to make sure I get that as close to perfect as I can. And it's also giving me the opportunity to cover up those little patches of white that haven't quite been covered in the first, uh, first application of paint. Now, when it comes to the hair on top of the head, I can begin to, just like I did before, just think a little bit about the, the way the hair is falling across the head but notice that you know at this stage I'm, I'm not putting in any kind of uh, any detail really still fairly broad brush strokes so again now that I'm on the right hand side I can check how well I've observed the shape of the sideburns, where the bottom of that sideburn is in relationship to the nose. It actually should be down around there, I think. should be a little bit lower. And then this, this edge of the hairline is a little straighter. And then we've got a, fa a fairly dark region of hair here. And I'll come back, but come back later and kind of refine that further. But I'm just adding a little bit more of the burnt umber to the mixture now. And so the next thing I'm going to tackle are the, the eyelashes. And, and when I say eyelashes, really all I'm going to do is put in a single line 
to indicate their presence. I'm not going to attempt to, you know, depict each lash. Far, far too time consuming and, you know, makes for relatively little difference to the appearance of the painting because, you know, in, in general, I would recommend viewing a painting or at least a painting I do from a couple of feet back to get the full impact. So I'm looking carefully at the shape of the line, but also how the thickness of the lashes as a whole varies. I made a slight mistake there, but I can correct that in a moment when I come back and do the whites of the eye. And that's probably enough for the moment. So I'll switch to the other eye. OK, and also, like I, did, like I did earlier, I can darken part of this nostril here and a little bit there as well. Now, the whites of the eye, I did those earlier with a mixture of ultramarine blue and titanium white. And I'm coming back in with another mixture of those same two colours, but a lighter version. And as I fill in the whites of the eyes, I'm also going to be making, um, you know, fairly minor, or hopefully fairly minor adjustments to the to the shape of the eye. But that said, you know, we will do what needs to be done. And so, as I look more closely at how the the white of the eye here relates to the iris, I can see I've got it a little bit wrong. So I haven't quite got the shape of the iris right there because when I added the, the white of the eye, I've kind of messed up the edge of the iris, but that's OK for the moment. I'm going to uh, carry on just for a second now and then I'll, I'll come back and you know, fix the iris in a, in a minute. So you can see the light blue I'm putting in here is still, you know, it gives me an off white, basically. Now, similar treatment for the other eye. So again, for this one, I'm going to have to adjust the, the iris that I put in. And while that paint is still fairly wet, I'm picking up a little bit more titanium white on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of drag that sideways. through that still wet paint, just to put a subtle highlight into a couple of parts of the eye. And there's also a, a subtle highlight here in the corner as well. But I need to you know, do some further work on that in a bit. Okay. 
for the irises themselves I've mixed up some burnt umber with some titanium white a little bit of the cadmium yellow and just a touch of alizarin crimson and I'm just going to go back in and just you know looking really carefully try and ensure that I've got both the the shape of the iris correct the size of the iris correct relative to the the white of the eye that's showing and also the position of the iris within the eye correct so you know there's sort of three things you've got to consider there really for this kind of second stage so that one's not too bad i don't think so let's do the same thing for the other eye or you know apply the same technique Okay, again, not too bad. Now I'm going to go back to that darker colour I had, the one that I used for the eyebrows. And I'm mixing the paint I still have on my brush in with that colour. So that's giving automatically giving me a darker version. I don't know if you can see on camera, I've got a darker version. So this is what I used just a second ago. Now I've got this darker version for some of the edges of the iris. So I'm not going to put dark area all the way around but certain parts of the iris are darker than others yeah you, and you'll find that with well i would say everyone you know very few things i think you can make a sweeping statement on in life but i, I think that one um, is going to be true for everyone there's going to be some variation in color and tone within the iris and then for the pupils I'm going to take the same paint I've got on my brush and I'm just mixing it with a really healthy amount of ultramarine blue that you can see here. Now obviously the, um, the irises are pure black like I mentioned last week but I'm just going to see just like I did for Annie how well just using something close to pure blue will work. So it, it may not, it may not but we'll, we'll see what happens. Now notice I'm not drawing a, you know, a circle or, or an ellipse here. I'm basically just putting a vertical brush stroke in and just seeing what I get, really. That, that actually doesn't look too bad, so that, that's, that's good. Having just cleaned my brush reasonably well, but not too thoroughly, I'm just picking up some titanium white. And I'm going to use this for the highlight in the eye and drag that through the still wet paint. And my hope is that I might get a slight discoloration and mixing within the highlight. OK, so for now, that, that will do on the eyes. So let's go and work on this part of the nose next. And when you look closely at the sitter, there's actually a little bit of reflected purple, just very subdued, a kind of bluey purple on the underside of the nose. And I imagine that's because of the light reflecting up off, off the shirt. It is, it's pretty subtle. And to be honest, the, the colour I'm putting down at the moment is a little too bluey. But I think it's worth persisting with for now, just to, you know, just to see if I can produce something interesting. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I find that, um, you know, even if I get slightly, you know, what one might consider to be the wrong colour, if you're looking at your reference, providing you kind of make the colours work as a whole, then you can, you know, you can often get a more interesting result. 
than you perhaps would have done had you just you know perfectly matched what's actually going on in reality and now while I've got this color on my brush I'm just going to look to see if I can kind of get away with using some of that somewhere else and I think I can so here around the eye and here as well and then I think also Again, it's not quite the right colour, but I can, you know, there's a sort of second uh, iteration. I can begin to put in a line of shadow up here. And that line, that line needs to be darker eventually, but yeah, that's OK for now. So because this is a fairly gentle colour, I can use it to kind of map out some of the work that I'm going to do in a moment. And uh, you know, when I go over with the darker colours I have, this is going to be relatively easy to cover up. But my hope is that if some of it shows through, I'll get some reasonably interesting effects. Uh, but, you know, like, like with everything, you've got to see see how it actually works in practice to be sure um, now that same color I think I can use on this side of the forehead as well so what I'm going to do is just swap brushes a moment and I've been putting the paint on more or less neat up until now in terms of this second stage of the painting but I'm going to put it on reasonably dilute and you can see the the brush strokes I'm using are following the contours of the of the forehead just here, and we'll see how that looks when it dries back. So in some senses, I've put a little bit of a glaze on over the the colour I'd put down earlier, and I can kind of use that same technique here on the nose, and even here actually on the. kind of the towards the tip of the nose there and perhaps even a little bit here and let's keep going with that until it runs out which won't be very long at all Now I'm coming with a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of cadmium yellow and also a little bit of titanium white and that is far too greeny a colour so I'm just adding a touch of the ultramarine blue. Let's see if I can get something a little closer. Uh, it's still too green but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I think I can get away with a little bit of green on the eyelid there and perhaps here up under the eye and even here in the corner of the eye as well and then perhaps just a touch here as well and even into the beard in that region and here as well kill that little touch of white that was still showing through. I'm going to look, put a little touch here on the end of that eyebrow and a little touch there as well. And I think even here, down here, on just this part of the beard 
and a little bit here where the beard is just below the lower lip and a little bit tucked in under there so I'm, I'm being a little more mindful of my brush strokes now that I'm getting into the beard I want to kind of you know mimic the way the hair is falling reasonably well And why not? Let's put let's put a little bit of that in on the uh, moustache as well. A little bit there too. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to go for you know a really good healthy amount of titanium white, a touch of cadmium yellow, and mix those together pretty thoroughly. Then I'm going to pick up some of the alizarin crimson, and I probably put way too much on there to be honest with you let's put a little little dab of the um, ultramarine blue and let's see let's see what that looks like on the on the bridge of the nose okay that's way too light so what I'll do is before I remix I'm just going to squint at my um, my reference here and use this color for some areas which where you know the lighter tone that I've got that I accidentally acquired you know where I can kind of get away with that so so over the top of the eyebrow here it's really quite light it's a light patch there Perhaps put a little highlight on the nose there. It's the wrong colour, really, but um, you know it'll do for for the moment. Even put a little bit of this on the on the lower lip for now. All right, so that's not too bad for the moment. Uh, but what I think I need to do is add a little touch of the alizarin crimson. And this is, you know, you can see how strongly that changes the colour, just that little touch. Some more of the uh, cad yellow. And again, let's see what we get. That's better, but still not right. OK, so I'm adding some more of the alizarin crimson. Let's see what that does. Well, that's actually not too bad. OK, so we'll go with that for the moment. And I think perhaps I'll change the colour of that lip highlight as well. I think I can maybe even use a touch of this down here on the neck, just a little bit. And a little touch over here as well. And now I need to uh, introduce some more yellow to that same colour. I might need quite a lot of yellow actually. see what that looks like again it's a little too vibrant but um, we can see if we can get a you know reasonably dramatic effect by including more vibrant colors than they actually are I quite like the way that the 
I quite like what the what the yellow is introducing to the to the painting. I'm just going to put a little touch of that here above the upper lip as well. OK, so next I want to introduce some of the kind of the more bluey highlights that are, are present. And I mean, these are pretty subtle in reality. So got to be kind of a little bit careful. I want to I want them to look blue, but I don't want them to look too crazy. And, and when I say blue, to be honest, they're probably closer to kind of a purple. So I'm, I'm literally just grabbing a corner of um, the alizarin the there. Oops, I actually mixed that into the wrong bit, but we'll see. See if that works. No, that's not too bad. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do with this. So how the question is how how light or dark is it, first of all? So well, it's not it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to again move my way around the face, picking out little patches of colour. and or putting in little bits where I think, you know, I can, depends how you look at it, I can either, where I can get away with it or where I think it'll enhance the painting, depends on how, how one views these things to an extent. And I think what I'm going to do, actually, now that I have this colour on the brush, I think it's kind of pretty, it's a pretty good colour to have um, for the hair. So I'm going to just spray the, the paint on the palette, as you just saw, with the water. And I'm just going to fairly lightly. So ideally, you know, it's better to do this wet in wet. And that is way too light. So what I'll do is I'll leave that bit for the moment, but I will introduce some of that colour to the beard where the tone is is more appropriate and you can see that um, using the flat brush in the way that I am where the the tips of the brush are, are a little bit frayed it's uh, it's a reasonably efficient way to create a beard like texture you know so I'm really just letting the the bristles skip across the surface of the painting here and you know i've got this dark underlayer of paint and you know this certainly won't be the the final part of the uh, treatment but um it's starting to bring things together in terms of the, the, the treatment of the beard so what i'll do is uh, so having having found that previous colour was way too light what I'll do is I'm just mixing back into that bit of ultramarine blue I had there already I'll just spray that with water again so that it, it moves fairly freely across the painting and let's see if I get a little luckier this time no it's not too bad it's probably still a bit too light so I'm grabbing some more of the ultramarine blue That's a little closer to what I actually intended. I can use some of that just to pick out a little highlight within the highlight that I put down earlier. I'm 
And while I'm here, what I'm doing is I'm picking out, uh, I've just picked up a load of titanium white. My brush still has that blue on, but what I'll do is I'll use that to kind of produce a dirty mix of white blue and uh, pick out some of the lighter areas of the beard in the way that I did before. So notice, you know, that so far the only bits of pure white I've used are in the highlights of the eyes. And uh, I probably will add a few licks of pure white later on, but, um, you know, I'm being fairly, you, you've got to leave your sort of brightest and darkest colours really for the, ex the absolute extremes. Otherwise, um, it's tricky to, you know, to get the right effects. So I need to fill in that little white gap. Having just worked on the beard, it's become apparent to me that uh, there's a little bit of uh, skin showing through below the uh, darkest part of the beard and just above the, the lighter part. So I've just picked up some of that flesh tone that I had mixed up earlier and uh, just put a little touch of that in there. And I can use some of that here where this colour I put down earlier is perhaps a little bit too light and use that to cover up some of the white areas. I still need to do a little more work on the nose and the brow, but I'm going to tackle the mouth next. So for the lower lip, I'm grabbing the alizarin crimson and uh, picking up some of that purple I created earlier. Touch of titanium white, and that's probably way too much titanium white, but uh, Let's uh, correct that with a bit more of the alizarin. Well, we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's difficult to judge on the palette. So let's see what that looks like for the lower lip. Now. It's not too bad, actually. OK, now the rest, of, can I use that elsewhere? Uh, I probably can. I can probably use it up here. And over here as well. I need to ex just realized I need to extend the moustache a little bit. Also need to extend the beard up a little higher on this right hand cheek, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that in a bit. this again so we've got I'm actually going to use this color just to outline the lips a little more precisely and then I will go over certain key areas with a different color in a moment Yeah, that's, I mean, that's not too bad in terms of shape now. OK, so let's. Uh, let's correct these colours. So taking that same colour and adding some titanium white. Get a slightly lighter mix, just going straight over that um, highlight I put in earlier. I can it's just easier on reflection to. painting the whole thing and then picking up a bit more white while that paint is still wet. I'll just uh, put in a, a soft highlight on that lip. Now, now the upper lip actually has quite a lot more blue in it. So I'm mixing that blue, I'll just show you, mixing that blue into the, the same slightly lighter version of the purple I used for the lower lip. And uh, 
that's perhaps a little too blue but it looks kind of interesting on the on the paper so we'll go with that for the moment and again just grabbing a little bit of titanium white and whoops a bit too much mixing that in so let's put some of that in well so we can go wet in wet with some fairly soft highlights again now i can use that color elsewhere Okay, so the colour of the tongue isn't looking too bad, but I need some very dark shadows and then I need to put the teeth in as well. For the darker colour, I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue, and a touch of the alizarin crimson to mix up a very deep bluey purple. Now that, that colour is going to be, you know, technically that's too vibrant for what we you know for reality but uh, I think it'll kind of I think blue uh, very deep blues deep purples I think they really make th things sing um, sometimes when you use those as your shadow color it's something I really enjoy doing so so why not so there's a dark area in the corner of the mouth there and really what I'm what I'm doing when I'm looking at this, I'm, tr I'm trying, you know, obviously I, I, I want it to look like a set of lips, but um, I'm really just looking at things as patches of colour and tone. And you, and, you know, let's carry on with that colour within the moustache a little bit. So I'm still using the fairly small brush, so I've got to be a little bit careful not to start drawing hairs. You know, just as I said, try and do little patches of colour. So you can see that by using this layered effect, you know, initially I basically just put down something which was, you know, vaguely close in in tone to the tone of the beard, um, and then I went over with some lighter colours, and now I'm going back over with a, a darker colour. And uh, it's a reasonably efficient, you know, way of doing things usually. Now, I, th I quite like that color. I'm, go I'm going to go over some of that later, but I think I can use that color back in under the nostrils. I think they'll look a little darker by doing that. And it's probably a bit too bright as it is, but so I'm just going to mix it in with one of the the lighter blues I had from earlier and I'm going to use that to again it's not really the right color but I'm going to use it to darken some of those eyelid lines extend a bit of the shadow under the nose here so when we're looking at shadows and highlights you know you want to sort of still think you know, even within those highlights and and or shadows there are dark shadows mid-tone shadows and uh, highlight shadows and equally there are dark highlights mid-tone highlights and very light highlights so you know obviously that's something of a simplification but if you start out from there you won't go too far wrong okay now i need to put the the teeth in
But actually, before I do that, I'm going to take um, that, that lighter colour I was using and just mix it in with one of the very pale blues I had from earlier. I've gone back to my flat half inch brush and I've just, because I just realised that, uh, oh, that's a little bit too light. So let's darken that up a bit. OK, there we go. That's a little more like it. Just helps to define the nose there a little. And there's kind of a pale, it's a very pale, pale shadow going over the bridge of the nose there. And again, it's not quite the right colour, but there is a shadow over that part of the nose as well. I could do the same under there, and perhaps a little bit under there. A little touch down there. And while, while I've got this brush, before I go back to the teeth, I'm going back to my deeper purple. And I'm just going to, let's see how dark that is. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's put some, as I mentioned, I needed to just raise the height of the beard a little bit there. And let's, let's pop in some of the putting in some darker areas of moustache here too. It's a little too much, but lifting off, lifting off some of the finger. And then going back to the lighter blue, Got a bit of white showing through there and that, that that needs to be kind of a paler area of the beard there where there's a bit of reflected light still need to correct this bit of the nose uh, but i'll come back and do that in a sec let's let's do those teeth as promised for the teeth i'm actually going to start i've gone back to my small flat round brush i'm actually going to start with this very pale blue so it's just ultramarine blue and a, and a bit of the white. And I'm going to use the brush to just carefully draw in a little bit of the two front teeth that are showing through, or showing from beneath the upper lip, I should, I should say. And then I'm going to do the same thing with, with just a touch more white in the mixture uh, for the, the lower teeth. So for the lower teeth, I'm not going to, I drew the individual teeth for the upper teeth, but I'm not going to attempt to do that. But what I am going to do is just look at the, the outline of the lower teeth. And, you know, there's a little bit of a step in that outline. You know, most of us have, ever, you know, some slight irregularities in the shape or the the, the edge line of our teeth, but that's working reasonably well, I feel. Going back to uh, my darker blue from earlier. So that's the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson, because I just need to remove that little bit of white there. And then taking that same color and mixing it with the light blue that I just used for the teeth. I'm just going to don't want to go too crazy on this, but there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of shadow there, and I think that's probably too blue. So pick up some of the alizarin crimson, so it's a bit more purpley. It's probably it's probably almost enough just need a few subtle highlights and for those highlights I'm actually going to use some of the that kind of mid skin tone that I used earlier mix in some white so you know when I say highlight it's all you know it's all relative 
and we'll just see how well that works. Um, yeah, that's probably enough there. Maybe a little bit along the edge of that tooth. And a little bit on just part of the front of the tooth there. So it's, you know, it's pretty subtle, but hopefully it indicates that, yeah, there are some teeth there. Now, I've got that colour on my brush, so I'm mixing it in with a slightly pinkier skin tone that I had earlier because the corner of the eye up here remember I put that highlight in some time ago just need to introduce a little picking up a little bit more of the alizarin so I just need a little bit of pink in the corner of the eye here so that you know that looks a little better it's not quite right but it's better than it was give the other eye the same treatment and I'm actually going to mix that in with that dark purple I used around the mouth. That's not too bad. I think I can I can live with that. I want to go back to the moustache a minute, so I'm just picking up some of the fairly um, sort of mid dark blue that I mixed up uh, with a reasonably wet brush. I've just taken that same colour and mixed it in with that mid skin tone that I used earlier. So it's kind of given me a, a greeny off. Kind of a greeny off, I don't know, brown really, I guess. But um, that's actually worked quite well. I, I often find this in the later stages of painting. I, I kind of just sort of blend some of the colours together that I've been using previously. And it often works fairly well. Right, and as crazy as it sounds, I think I'm actually going to use some of that greeny off brown for the highlight in the lip here. And so we'll see what that, how that works. And the answer is not great, but smudging it with my finger seems to produce something which is OK. I can use some of that down there too, on the neck, just a little bit there. So my main thoughts now are I need to finish the headphones, I need to darken this part of the hair. I want to add just a few licks of white in the beard but not too many. All right so we're back to burnt umber mixed with ultramarine blue and I just want to it's mostly ultramarine blue actually so if I just run that over the, that part when that dries back some of that will will still show through perhaps soften some of this as well Actually, I will just pick up a little bit of white and mix that in with the paint I've got on my brush at the moment and put a, there we go, subdued highlight in there. That's more like it. That's more the effect I wanted. Um, okay, so I think I may be able to use that blue as a 
subdued highlight on the upper lip too and that's way too dark so I need a bit more of the titanium white in there again smudging that with my finger seems to do the trick reasonably well Now I'm just going to drag most of the paint off the brush and pick up a good amount of titanium white and mix that in with, with what's on my brush and see if I can use that as a highlight on the nose. It's not really right there but it, it'll go, go up there reasonably well. Perhaps a little touch. Yeah. Okay, and I think it's actually going to be, yeah, it's better suited for the headphones, that colour. Perhaps a bit too bright. Go back into our super dark colour, mix that white in as well. Let's fill that little area in. Now there's a pretty subtle highlight on the nose, so I'm, I'm going to go back with that kind of yellowy colour. A little bit of titanium white, a little bit more. It's probably perhaps too much, but we'll see. Yeah, that's OK. It's just enough to, to kind of pick out the bridge of the nose a, a little bit better. Um, I could put a little touch of that here. A little touch here as well, just the slightest, you know, th slightest amount really. Maybe a little bit under the nose, a little bit above the upper lip. Touch there. And what I've done now is just, you know, dragged my uh, brush through a uh, paper towel without actually rinsing it out. And I'm just mixing what's left on the brush with some titanium white. So I've used, you know, for the highlights in the beard, I've used pretty cool colours. So a little bit of a warmer white, I think, will work quite well. And it will just allow me to, you know, where I've got those little bits of white paper showing through. And... So, so, so by doing this, you see that the white area of the beard, white in inverted commas, because it isn't pure white, it's going from a warm white to a very cool white to a slightly warmer white. So it just adds a little bit of you know, extra dimension to, to what we're doing. And then, you know, not going too crazy, but just use the tips of the bristles of the brush to describe a little di a few directional lines there.
and we need to connect those uh, these two pieces of the headphones together um, so I've just switched to a, a rigger ultramarine blue with a little bit of um, burnt umber The side as well. And uh, I may as well use that same color to. Oh, I almost forgot something actually. There's a cable coming down here. But I may as well use that same colour to replace the bottom that I, uh, I removed earlier, which you can't see at the moment, I've just realised. Let's, uh, there we go. So I'm just using pure blue for this. Um, it's uh, it's not a big part of the composition, but it but it helps sell sell the idea that he's actually wearing a a shirt of some kind. Um, and I'm I mean, I think I just want to tidy up that line of the collar. So it's mostly the alizarin crimson now. There is a bit of ultramarine blue in there as well. Now, actually, I think I'm going to leave it at that. What I will do is just remove some of these little bits of white that are showing through in the background. Here's a look at the finished painting. I did add a few warm highlights here and there and just generally made some you know, minor adjustments, just tidying up certain areas. I posted the finished painting on Instagram and Nihal was actually kind enough to comment on the painting and say how much he liked it. So that's always you know, really lovely uh, when the sitter feels that you've captured their likeness you know, well. That's always quite satisfying as an artist. I think the likeness on this painting is certainly better than the one I did last week of Annie. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. This is a, a longer form video and uh, you know, I'll maybe do more of these in the future. But please remember to like, comment and subscribe. I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.